bro, you better film me, because this is going to be sick. Oh, yeah, let's do this. Here we go. All right. You got your camera going? All right. Here we go. Look out, everybody. Woo! I landed it. I made it. I can't believe it. I am the sickest dude ever. Did you guys see that? Did you see that? I made it. I made it. Sorry, I'm dope and you're not. Come on, let me see that video. Show me. Did I make it? I'm going to be sponsored. I'm going pro. I don't have to go to school no more. What? I still got to go to school? Oh, man. Why did I bother doing this then? All right. Let's get our math work done then, everybody. Here we go. First of all, it's Monday. Let's take care of our quote of the week. Our quote today comes from Richard Lavoy, who once said, Fair does not mean that every child gets the same treatment, but that every child gets what he or she wants. That's right. What do you want? Let me know. Email me. Message me on Schoology. I'm here to help you. Just let me know, everybody. All right. Remember, your current grade is on Schoology, not Power School. Take a look at Schoology Gradebook. Make sure you're keeping up with the work. Here we go. 10.3 Volumes of Spheres. Look at that beautiful poetry. It's almost as beautiful as my lovely hairdo. Thank you, Justin Bieber. All right. So first thing I do is I write down my formula. The volume of a sphere is four-thirds times pi times the radius cubed. Okay. Well, the radius must have been a five because I replaced my radius with a five, my pi with a 3.14, 125 times pi times four divided by three. I got 523 and one-third, otherwise known as 523.3 repeating inches cubed. If your answer is a little bit different from mine, everybody, Mine's different from what's in the book, too. They must be using a more accurate value of pi. As long as you're super close to what I got here, I'm sure you got it. Uh, let's take a look at number 11, everybody. Number 11, same thing. The radius must have been a 7. 7 cubed times pi times 4 divided by a 3. I got about 1,436 feet cubed. If I remember right, on number 12, they tried to trick you by giving you a diameter of 18. That means the radius is 9. 9 times 9 times 9 times pi times 4 divided by 3. And I got something close to 3,052.08 millimeters. Number 16. Now we're going to do a little bit of the opposite. Now they're telling me what the volume is. And in this case, they included that pi. Well, that means a pi on this side, pi on that side cancels each other out. I just took them both away from each side. Then I multiplied both sides by 3 fourths, otherwise known as 0.75. And I got 729. Hope that number looked a little familiar. It will eventually. Because once I take the cube root of both sides, the cube root of r cubed gives me just r. Well, the cube root of 729, everybody, is whole number 9. Therefore, the radius in that one was 9 millimeters. Number 18. All right, same thing, except now they're not giving me pi on this uh, area or the volume of this here sphere. So I had to replace pi with the 3.14. In this particular instance, everybody, I do believe I multiplied 3.14 times 4 divided by 3, and I got something really close to a 4.187. Then I divided both sides by a 4.187, which gives me r cubed is equal to about 42.99. Well, you take the cube root of both sides, man, I didn't know. So I deduced that 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, that means that 43, let's call it 43, is going to be in between there. The answer's got to be in between the 3 and the 4. So I started guessing and checking, and actually the first one I guessed was pretty darn close. 3.5 cubed is going to be really close to 43, everybody. So let's say the radius is 3.5 feet. And our last question, number 20, they gave you a softball. And they said the volume of the softball is 29. Well, in this case, everybody, I did a little bit differently. I decided to multiply both sides by 3 fourths first. So I found out that 75% of 29 is a 21.75. Then I divided both sides by a 3.14. Uh, yeah. How am I going to find the cube root of 6.9? Well, 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, so it's got to be in between a 1 and an 8, right? Well, so then I tried my next thing. I tried a 1.5. Cubed, not close enough. 
So I tried a 1.75. Not close enough to that 6.9. Ooh, but when I tried a 1.9, I got super duper close. So let's say the radius of this softball, everybody, is about 1.9 inches. Hope that made sense. All right, here we go, everybody. We are off to our last section of the book. You heard me right. It's the last section. But we're going to break this up into two days. I think it's kind of a big section. So let's just do the first half of 10.4 today. We have to find the surface area of similar solids, everybody. Well, here's a very important fact for you all. Similar solids have the same shape, obviously, and they have to be proportional with their corresponding dimensions. That means their measurements, as in radius to radius, that would be corresponding, or length to length. But don't compare radius to height. Those would not be corresponding dimensions. They have to be proportional. So we're going to use a lot of proportions on these eight problems for homework tonight. You got two different kinds of problems you got to master. Take a look at this first example. They're going to ask you some questions like, are these two cylinders similar? Well, to be similar, they have to have proportional corresponding dimensions. So I got a radius and a height. I got a radius and a height. Let's compare those. Look at my beautiful poetry. Look at how I'm always putting in my labels on my proportions, everybody. I got a ratio here for the small cylinder. I got a ratio here for the big cylinder. The ratio for the small one is the radius compared to the height. So for the big one, it has to be the radius compared to the height. Is my 5 compared to 3 the same as a 7.5 compared to a 4.5? Well, just to be sure, I cross multiply. 3, or I'm sorry, 5 times the 4.5, is that the same as the 3 times the 7.5? Multiply, multiply, 22.5 is equal to 22.5. So yes, they are similar because their dimensions are proportional. Can you dig it? All right, you got a little trickier question here. For example, number two, they want you to find the missing dimensions. That was plural, everybody. Whatever dimensions are missing, you got to find them. And for most of these problems, it's more than one, just like this one. I'm looking for the length and the width of this here rectangular prism. But you did give me all the dimensions for the other one, and I do believe they told me that they were similar. They have to be. Okay, so once again, let's come on in. Take a closer look here. And we have my big ratio compared to my small ratio. I decided, because you can do it any way you want, I compared it height to length. So this side has to be height to length. That's what that H and L, H and that cursive L stand for. Well, the height was 20, the length was 11. So says I. The height was 8, we don't know the length. I put in my variable x there. We cross multiply, 20 times x is the same as 11 times 8. That means 20 times x is the same as 88. Divide both sides by 20. x is a 4.4. That length has to be a 4.4. We're going to do the same exact thing all over again, except now we're going to look for that width. Right, everybody? If 20, the height, is compared to the width is 20 to 8, then the height compared to the width is 8 to what? Well, 20 times x is the same as 8 times 8, which is 64. Divide both sides by 20. I just proved x is equal to 3.2. That means the width is 3.2. All right, everybody, you can do it. It's only eight problems tonight, today. Uh, but beware, I'm sure these last few questions are going to ask for more than one dimension. All right, there you go, everybody. Eight problems, and we're going to finish this chapter tomorrow.